So in this quickie, we're going to look at how we can work with this electronic gyro and accelerometer. It's the MPU 6050. Roll the titles. Is that it? <sighs> so what can a gyro do? It can detect the orientation. So the gyro chip is right in the middle there. And it can detect movement in that direction, in that direction, and in that direction. They have names. I mean, in the soft, you might say it labeled as X, Y, and Z. In airplane terms, and we have, at no expense spared, as you can tell, a small model airplane to explain this. So, so we have pitch, roll, and yaw. And on this board, if you orientate it, I think it's this way, I think, then pitch is rotating on that axis, which would be like that for this board. Roll is like that, which is like that on that board. And yaw is, let's put it down, is just in that direction like that. So the board rotating like that. Yaw is the most difficult for it to detect and it needs a little calibration before it does that successfully. But we'll show you all that. So let's move on to the library and uh, show you a couple of demos. Otherwise this quickie is going to turn into a longie. So this came just the board and the pin header and I've soldered them on. There are quite a few connections to this. However, you actually only need to use four with your Arduino or ESP32. I'll bring a higher quality picture on the screen now and we'll just go through them. Obviously, you've got voltage and ground. And then this is an I2C device. So we've got SEL, which is clock, and SDA, which is the data. So we just need to hook them up to A4 and A5, which are SDA, uh, I2C connections on the Arduino and the appropriate ones for the SP32 as well. I'm only going to go through the Arduino connections today. You just need to hook them up as you would with any other I2C device. And Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your auntie, away you go. So here we go. Don't worry about the screen. This is so I can display the results from this module easier than it being on the serial monitor. I will show you the basic software for the serial monitor, but I'll also show it on this screen as well. So these, that screen actually is I2C device as well. So we've got blue I always use for my data and yellow for the clock. So we've got an additional connection to that bus going to this screen as well. So we've took off the Arduino's power and grind up to this rail here, jumped it over there as well so that that screen's got power and grind as well. And then on the actual module itself, we've got power and grind connected straight onto those connections there. And then the actual clock and data connected with the yellow for clock, blue to data, to the Arduino's clock and data lines. Okay, this wasn't that easy to find a library that worked well with this. I tried four or five libraries, had problems with them all but one. And to save you time, I will take you straight to that one that works with this. Oh, look at me, I'm making people happy. It may be other libraries work better with other versions of this board. I can't say how they would. If you get an MPU 6050, this library should work well. Having said that, some of the labs I tried just were either awkward, very awkward, or it just didn't work. Well, maybe it was me not setting them up right, but either way. So let's get to our library. Let's go to Tools and Manage Libraries. So in your search bar, if you type in 6050, which is what I'm going to do, you might see a few installed libraries here. Ignore all of them until I point to the one that you actually are going to install that I know works well and will give you the demo of it, that I know works well and I've had success with. And that is this one, MPU 6050 underscore light. This worked a treat and I did, as I said, I tried several. This worked really easily, works in angles if you want to, in degrees, fantastic, no problems. Other ones are the fiddly, faddly, hard to set up, or I set them up wrong, or whatever, although I don't know it could be my fault, I'm fairly perfect. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, whatever, select this one, MPU light, and install this. This one here, whack that in. When you've done that, there is a demo, 
you can go to on the far menu examples and up and on. And down we go find it wherever it's gone there it is MPU 6050 light um, I think I chose get angle ah that is fine and you can see what it's doing here at the mission it's doing a calibration basically it's saying do not move your 6050 it is calibrating this is only important for the your YAW for the your axes for the pitch and roll it doesn't matter if you don't do this and you want to use your you will have problems with that your value just changing just in increments goes upwards slowly over time not even that slowly so that does need to be done if you use an acceleration that may well be done I have not looked at the acceleration of this module just the X and Y because I want to be able to just tilt something in two axes that's all I'm interested in at the moment so it does that does that set up and then on the serial port make sure you've got it set to 9600 if you want to or change that to whatever serial port speed you're using but on the serial port it will then output the X the Y and the Z with Z being the your angle X and Y being the pitch and roll so I'll show you that quickly operating so you can see what comes out of the serial port so I'll upload that to the board so we're uploaded there we go this is the calibration sequence which takes a good few seconds and off we go so if I move it in the your axis which is just me rotating on the flat surface you can see the Z axis there is moving so that's your and then I'm going to move it what um, I think it's pitch and you can see the X axis is increasing and if I go to a full 90 degree angle from the flat surface it on I can see 90 degrees on there and just to show you roll there you are, and Y is changing for the roll positive in one direction negative in the other again for 90 degrees it would be minus 90 or plus, plus, or plus 90 in the other direction so pitch roll we can move it all the three directions all with nice angles easy to work with so let's have a look at it on screen now this software that I'm going to bring up is one I've written and it's based on the one you've just seen so you'll find this on a project page for this and link is in the description below so I'll upload that okay so I'm going to hold it towards camera and it will calibrate in this orientation just get the camera to focus so it's calibrating and there we go so we've got pitch roll and yaw so if I move it like this you can see the yaw the yaw not yaw yaw the yaw is moving and if I alter the pitch you can see the pitch is moving like that and those pitch and roll are in uh, degrees and we can do the roll and we can see the roll moving like that so if we do the pitch to 90 degrees you wouldn't be able to see but believe me if I go like that to approximately 90 degrees down there then it has 90 degrees on that display so yeah you could think of some sort of little game with a display where it could involve moving and tilting and rotating that's what I'm kind of thinking of but you might have a lot of other uses for it at the moment I am a bit stumped as to what I could use this for but it's an interesting module as it is as it stands and you may have a really interesting use for it perhaps with the accelerometer maybe you could build an accelerometer to fit into your car so you can tell how fast your car can accelerate for mine it's 0 to 60 in uh, I think it's 3.4 days something like that anyway I will just show you what happens if you don't do the calibration and it doesn't affect pitch and roll only affects the R or the Z axis let me just upload that code and we'll come back to this okay I've reprogrammed that well I've just commented that one line that did the calibration so you'll see it'll go straight in just a flash of text maybe to the actual pitch roll and yaw now watch the Z axis the Y the yaw notice how it's slowly just increasing over time now it's not just fluttering like the others are if you look at the pitch and roll they're fluttering they're fluttering in and out but always around that same so pitch is around 5.6 5.7 roll is around 2.1 ish but the yaw is constantly just climbing up 5.6 5.7 5.8 5.96 6.1 .6, and you leave that for a few seconds a few minutes and it's going to be up to 20 30 or so I don't know the ins and outs of these chips 
So I don't know why that is the case. But obviously, I can understand how your would be very hard to do anything against sort of gravity. I imagine there's something to do with gravity that you can sense for the for the actual roll and the pitch. But with your, you're not changing the orientation of this chip with gravity at all. So I imagine that's where the difficulty comes in and why you need that calibration sequence. For me, for the project I'm thinking of, I don't need the yaw, so I could go straight in without any calibration. I think as well that actually once you've calibrated one chip to the right settings, you can then write code to store them settings in the code, and then it'll work without having to do that calibration sequence every time, I think. I have seen it, certainly seen that hinted at in other libraries that I looked at that didn't work. Uh, so I presume maybe in this library, it will. I'll give you a link to the actual library GitHub page as well. You can read up about the particular library I used. But that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, you liked it, you know that, that old big thumbs up. It is a big thumbs up in that because I've got the camera close to the board now. Or if you'd like to see some more content like this or hopefully even sort of kind of better, which wouldn't be hard, would it really? Uh, not at all. I think we could improve on this. Then hit that subscribe button. Thanks very much my patrons who patronise me and thank you for the odd person sometimes in the comments who patronises me oh, always appreciated and thank you very much for watching till next time bye for now